Today's video, I wanted to showcase the highest win rate vehicle in Tier 8 for World of Tanks. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty unsurprised on what it is, being the BZ-176. You might say, well, what about the Charlemagne or the ISU-130? Well, judging that only 7,000 games have been played in the Charlemagne and only 123 in the ISU-130, it means that barely anybody are playing these tanks, and uh, the BZ-176, with its almost 200,000 games, is a much better sample size. And yeah, uh, it is by far the highest win rate tank if you're looking at how many games are being played in the vehicle. It's kind of crazy. You want to know what I found was really sad? So this here is the highest win rate tanks. And notice how the entire first page of 50 tanks has zero tech tree vehicles. Let's go to page two. Uh, still quite a bit. So the Keylana is the highest win rate tech tree vehicle, and it's less than 50%. And then it's just a bunch of premiums again until we make it to artillery. That is crazy. I mean, apart from the Kilana, the actual first heavy we get to is the Progetto 54. That's crazy. It shows just how much better premiums are than Tech Tree Tanks in the majority of situations for World of Tanks. But, uh, well, we're going to be playing in the most OP of the bunch. Let me just get my window capture set up properly. There we go. This is the BZ-176. As we can see, I am running Improved Hardening. We have a Bounty Rammer and T2 Turbo. This tank is incredibly inaccurate at 0.4 dispersion, 3.3 seconds of aiming time. All those values are really bad. Uh, but you know what's not bad? The fact that this vehicle deals 650 damage per shot on the standard and 800 damage per shot on the premium. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a little bit nutty. So we are going to try two battles in this tank. And uh, we're going to see what exactly we are able to do in the BZ-176. Now, to be fair, this is a highly tier-dependent vehicle. If you're fighting tier 10s, you're probably not going to do all too amazing in the BZ-176. And it's quite easy to understand why. With only 220 mils of pen, you're going to struggle to cut through a lot of tier 10 heavies. But... It's still stupid that if you do pen a tier 10 heavy, you can absolutely just demolish them. So here we are in our first game. Um, this is a pretty solid map to get a BZ on. I got a couple options going through my mind. The options are I can either make my way towards the middle of the map, or I can make my way... I'll cover you if I can... Uh, but yeah, I can either make my way wide or to mid. I'm gonna try and go mid. Alright, so let's get our speed boost ready to activate. With a T2 turbo, we should easily go over um, 50 kilometers per hour. Yes, we can see that is the case. I was gonna put on a T3 turbo, but I thought it was a little overkill. Uh, I wish there was an easier way to get, you know, equipment for these tanks, but it is a little bit painful to actually get the turbos. So for now, I'm just going to keep my uh, T3 turbo the way it is. Oh, we got a T92. Who needs to aim? I do, apparently. That shell literally went to China. There's no way the LT432 is going to pen me, and I'm not worried about that T92 either. And uh oh, my game's doing the lag problem. Okay, I have fixed my game's problem. Uh, I forgot to turn off image capture, which causes my game to lag. I always forget to do that as well. So we got an AAT-60 in front of us, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now, this player is not going to enjoy our company uh, in just a couple seconds. Yeah! Bye-bye. Uh, to be fair, he should have been paying attention. That was definitely a skill issue, uh, but still, that player did not enjoy life all too much. All right, we got the AMX-AC in the back, and well, I'm not going to worry too much about the AMX right now. What I'm going to do... So I'm going to drive right over the ridge and just see if I can nuke the LT-432. Uh, Hello, good sir, how are you doing? And... <laughs> I can't. Well, there goes um, half of the LT-432. Not half, sorry. 80% uh, of the LT-432. Yeah, you see, the thing is, is that if you're not paying attention for about one second, you just die to this tank. Now, I am going to fix my fuel tank because... As Quickie Baby always says, you don't want to have a damaged fuel tank in World of Tanks. It's just a little bit sussler. Imagine if that had hit the AMX. That would have been insane. Um, you know what I see right now? Oh, I actually see a bunch of tanks in our spawn. Uh, interesting. Well, the Keylana just killed our teammate. So what I'm hoping right now is that I can just aim it on the Keylana's lower plate. The chance of this hitting is very slim to none. 
74, yeah, I was going to say. Very, very slim to none to hitting that shot. I'm not really sure what our team's doing on this flank of the map over here. Uh, I can tell you, though, it's not a lot. I can tell you that for a fact. Now, the good news about the Kilana is that the further I drive away, the less damage it deals. So if I just drive over towards this side of the map, ideally, that tank should literally deal, like, no damage per shot. What I'm hoping right now is maybe I can squeeze behind... Well, you know, I don't know. I kind of want to try and get behind this Emil 1, but he's just getting nuked at this point anyway by artillery. So what I'm thinking is I'm just going to drive right on up this ridge, and we're going to see if we can just bonk the Emil. Uh, I think it's pretty reasonable to try and do this. I don't know if that AMX is still back there, but we're going to find out. Keep on going, keep on going, keep on going, 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 going. Let's see. Uh, there's the Emil. Hello, good sir. And we don't have the gun depression yet, but there you go. Easy 700 damage shot into that tank, and he's dead. I mean, this thing is so stupid. We've already dealt 2,400. We got hit by the Kilana, and that was still a pretty nasty roll, honestly. 450 is a little stupid. As I said, we literally have nobody in our spawn doing anything right now. Uh, we have the AMX. Who needs to aim? I do. I apparently do, because that shell uh, did not do much for us. All right, well, I'm going to push over here. And we're just going to, you know, we're going to use our rocket boost. We're going to get behind these guys. Uh, I think that's a pretty reasonable thing to do. Got the T-34 in front of us, and the T-34 does pen us, but you know what? I don't think that's going to matter all too much. I'm going to ignore the T-832. And there you go. No more T-34. <laughs> I can't. I don't know what our team's scared of, by the way. I mean, we've got a full health BZ-166, and... I mean, our whole team's basically full health. I don't know what these guys are too scared of uh, right now. I'm just going to aim it on the lower plate of this T-32, and... There you go, 320 damage. He's dead. We are up to 3,300 damage dealt at this point, which is pretty dang good. Um, the problem is, again, our team is just a bunch of wimps, and we're probably going to lose because of that. I'm going to try and leave. I'm going to activate my rocket boost. I have to make my way back to our spawn. That's what I have to do right now, because if I don't, we're going to lose this game. Is that Schwarzpanzer? It is. It's up top on the hill over here. Okay, well, what I'm thinking right now is that I can make my way right over here, and there you go. No more Schwarzpanzer. That was pretty easy. Okay, well, our team is making their way back over towards spawn. We are up to 3,700 damage, which is pretty nice. And uh, there's the Kilana spotted, okay? That's not too much of an issue. If I can just get an HE shell into the Kilana, uh, that'll obviously help out our team a lot. But again, base cap is a huge problem right now. All right, we're just going to poke this, and... Well, zero damage HE, because it went into his gun mantlet. Yeah, this is probably going to be a loss, to be honest. Um, uh, the problem is, I can't really do much to counteract this situation. Kilana did shoot, though. Which means that... Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Kilana's getting shot. Th these guys need to go for the base, and they're not. They're just circling the Kilana, which is how you lose games. They're just not going for the base. Like, I can't get to the base. I'm not fast enough to. I'm in a... Yeah, we're just gonna lose this. Uh, well... Oh, imagine if that had hit. Imagine. What are you guys doing? Go for the base! I don't, I don't understand people sometimes. I mean, whatever. This was a really disappointing game. Um... Our lights should have just YOLO'd the base. Like, even if you're going to die, you're going to lose the game if you don't. So it doesn't really make much of a difference. Uh, oh, well. That was a really disappointing battle. We did a pretty solid job, to be fair. And I, I guess we could have made our way back to the base instead of focusing on the heavies. Uh, but, man, our team really just was not doing too good of a job there. Let's see what we were able to do, though. In total, 3,700 damage. Quite solid in results. Yeah, wow, our BZ did zero. Um, yeah, that was a pretty good game, though. I mean, the BZ-176, as we can see in game number one, is an incredibly stupid tank. Yes, its gun is awful on accuracy. Like, at distance, the tank is terrible. Like, while I will say uh, the BZ is overpowered, at anything more than about 150 meters, the tank is dookie. And I will be the first to admit that right here. Like, you saw that when aiming at the Kilana, there's no way you're going to easily hit that thing's lower plate at 200, 300 meters away. There's no way you're going to hit an ELC uh, at the distance we were. It's just not possible. And that is one thing you're going to have to keep in mind about this tank when using it. But when you get close range, 
It's the fact that this vehicle has so much frontal protection, paired with gun depression, paired with a gun that is almost impossible to counter. That is where this tank becomes truly overpowered. So while we didn't win that first game, we're going to win the second one. By the way, do you like my little rocket camo? I made sure to put on the space camo. It really matches the vehicle. So, uh, yeah, we're going to head over towards Heavy Hill. With four rockets, we should be able to get up the hill. Uh, the only downside is that we're basically going to have to use all four of our rockets to get up the hill. Uh, but I think it'll still be worth it. So here we go. First rocket boost activated. You're going 45, 47. The one thing that I don't like about the Chinese heavies is that when they use their rocket boosts, they are incredibly slow. And you're going to see that here. I mean, we're going to use all four. And, I mean, this tank literally goes at the top speed of like 35. I was honestly very tempted to run a Bond Turbo on this tank. The only reason I didn't is because of the fact that, well... It's kind of overkill, A, and B, we don't get better on-movement dispersion, and I really think that on-movement dispersion is very important for a vehicle like this, so instead that's what I've decided to run. Uh, but as we can see, I'm already down to my last rocket boost, and we haven't even made it, like, halfway up the hill. Uh, I really don't like this map, to be honest. I don't like how big the hill is. But, well, we're getting there. We, uh, we have used, at this point, all of our rockets, so we are now as slow as you can be. Our Hawk has spotted some vehicles, and we're so close to being able to see them, however, not yet. Unfortunately, as you'll notice, they are no longer detected. Well, yeah, we're not able to see any of them yet. I'm just going to keep climbing up the hill, and hopefully, as we make our way up this hill... There you go, T-29 is spotted. But as we can see, we are not able to hit the T-29 from this angle. Our artillery is, though. We love our artillery. Uh, we got the G-Source spotted... Oh, wait a sec. Wait a sec a Rooney. We might be able to hit that g -sor. Um, Interesting. I'm going to wait just a teeny bit. And I don't know if that hit him, but it looked like it went right where I shot. So that g -sor might be down a lot of health. Either way, we're going to continue on getting up the hill at this point. We'll see what we can do. We got a Progetto 54, who already gets bled a little bit. T-29 still chilling over there. God, this tank is slow, though. I mean, this is with a turbo, and we're going 15. Uh, I mean, I know I shouldn't really be complaining about this tank, but, man, it is really unenjoyable to drive when the mobility on this thing is this bad. All right, well, we're going to make our way on up the hill, and let's see. We got the Progetto, and there you go. 915 into his tank. I mean, that's just so stupid. It really is. Like... <laughs> I don't even know what to say. We saw that they had a Type 57 down low, so we're going to reload here. we got seven seconds left, and what I'm hoping is that we can maybe shoot this Type 57. Yeah, there he is. Hello, good sir. How are you doing? And, well, 886 off of his tank. Artillery does zero. It's honestly pretty funny. The artillery didn't damage us at all. Wow. Um, let's just reload. we got ten seconds left. Hopefully we can hit the Type 57 again. Let's reload. And in five, four... Three, two, one. There you go. Two shots, and we've killed a full health tier eight. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I really don't. We got ten seconds left, and we're making our way up the hill. Uh, you'll notice that our spawn is getting absolutely crapped on, though, which is rather unfortunate. What I'm going to do at this point is drive right over the ridge and just nuke the G-Sor. Yep, there you go. Uh, we did bleed a bit for it, but... Um, I really can't get too mad. Full health G-Sor is now 150 HP, so that's kind of a dub. IKV is pretty low. All right, well, let's reload again. Let's see. We got the Carnarvon. We got the T-29. I'm just going to drive up here, and eh, we'll just kill the G-Sor. I wanted to shoot the Carnarvon, but it really doesn't matter. We're already over 3,400 damage, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Uh, we got 10 seconds left. I would expect that ISM, yeah, to penetrate the Carnarvon. That's a pretty easy shot. Let's just move our way on up now. And let's aim it on the Carnarvon. Three, two, one. Well, that is obviously the downside of, again, the poor accuracy on this tank is the fact that you aren't going to hit a lot of the shells you shoot. All right, well, we are going to make our way down the hill, obviously. So the best way to do that is just to slither our way over here. Just like so. We did lose 470 HP for that, though. Um, that's my fault. I mean, I, I should have taken my way down the safer route, but oh well. I mean, we still have plenty of health to take a shot from the T-34. So at this point, I'm kind of hoping we can just nuke the T-34 for about half of his health. I guess we'll see. 
Oh, we also have the Ferdinand over here. Interesting. Well, the Ferdinand might be a pretty easy pen. So let's see if we can get the Ferdinand first. Aiming. Let's just slow down a little bit. Let's aim it on the Ferdinand's lower plate. Well, doesn't really matter now. Dude got nuked anyway. We'll just slam the shell. 3,852 damage. Yeah, this is a pretty easy win. And I would say a decent chunk of why we won the hill so fast is because of the fact we were in this tank. I mean, it's just so stupid. It really is. All right, well, let's, uh, let's load in an AP shell for the M12 because I don't see much of a reason to do otherwise. And we're just going to we're gonna wait. I know that the M12 has to be somewhere in this area in front of us here. So we're just going to fully aim in, and we're going to wait for, hopefully, our Hawk 30 to spot the guy. Oh, there you go. And <sighs> unfortunate. I mean, we had to snap it because, as you saw, half a second later, the dude died. But, yeah, our accuracy did not like us too much there. The fact that we were able to not only drive up the hill this game, but then literally obliterate everything on the hill. We took 900 off the g sword, 900 off the Progetto. Um, I mean, we killed the Carnarvon. Or, no, we didn't kill the Carnarvon. We only did, like, 50 to the Carnarvon. But, I mean, the take's stupid. If our team wasn't winning the hill so easily, I single-handedly probably could have nuked that hill and done upwards of five to 6,000 damage and just held there. The, the tank is ridiculous, and no single vehicle should get away with what the BZ gets away with. There's no doubt in my mind that this is the most overpowered tank in the game. Is it boring? Yeah. This thing is really slow, and while the rockets do allow it to be fun for a short burst of time, uh, it, it's still really boring to drive this vehicle, but it's just ridiculous. It really is. So let's take a look at the post-game results here, and uh, let's see what this tank is capable of in the two games we played. Again, you need to remember this is a Tier 8. Not a Tier 10, a Tier 8. We did, uh, oh, no, I don't care, Wargaming. We did 3,852 damage, 1,200 XP. We netted only 60,000 credits. And if we take a look at the stats, we averaged 3,700 for two games in in a tier eight. <laughs> I can't. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's the BZ-176. By far the most OP tank in the game. Um, uh, I don't know what to say. Let me know what you guys thought about this gameplay in the comments down below. And obviously, if you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button. Oof. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.